You want to be a winner, but right now you're just a beginner. And every day your chances seem to be getting thinner. But don't lose hope. There's room in my boat. Let Granny throw you a lifeline before I show you how to float. Greetings, fam. Yesterday I spoke to you um, about losers. Well, today I want to talk to you about winners. And today's uh, video presentation is entitled, How to Win at Life. And here we go. Let's jump right in. We come into this world not knowing, neither understanding what life has installed for us. We are beginners. We're learning to live in a world that other people have already created over the course of human history. Within this world, people live life on their own terms. Well, maybe partly on their own terms and partly following the terms set by other people and society. Either way, they make a life following a certain set or conscious and sometimes even unconscious directives that shape their choices, decisions, and actions each and every day. Choices can involve good decisions or they can involve bad ones. Everybody, just like you and me, must live according to a set of rules. These rules govern how we live our lives from day to day. But I'm not talking necessarily about laws created by governments and institutions. I'm specifically referring to a set of rules that go deep into the consciousness. For instance, those of us who fear God, we will live our life according to what we feel the Father in Heaven wishes us to do and how He wishes us to behave and also how we wish to, to um, behave and to live based on our values, our beliefs, convictions, and our own personal standards. Every day we live in accordance with these rules to our own benefit or in the case of those of us who make bad personal choices to our detriment. And often we do either or without even questioning them. Now, these rules have been conditioned into our psyche over the course of a lifetime by others, such as um, people who grow up in a particularly religious household, may find that they are living life according to what they have learned in that household. And so they follow the standards uh, of that conditioning and it becomes what we call a conditioning process. Um, these things uh, can, we can be conditioned over the course of a lifetime by others and by society in general. And that's why those of us who don't have um, home schooling and breeding and training, we go outside of the home and we become conditioned by our surroundings and our peers and our outside influences. Um, many of us have been willing participants and have accepted things to be one way or the other. And at one point or another, we made this um, conscious or even an unconscious choice occasionally and have consequently accepted to live and perceive life in a specific way. And this is why this current generation is always talking about being about that life. And in the case of that life being a negative choice, many of you have accepted it and live it and perceive it as being the only life. And this conditioned way of looking and responding to life events and circumstances will then shape your future, whether you like it or not. So what may seem very cool and hip when you're young, as you grow older, and it begins to shape your shape your life your life you may find that it was a bad choice and now you have to undo all the damage that you did in your youth and sometimes it cannot be undone especially in the case of those people who are now in prison for many 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 years and they have nothing but time to dwell upon the bad choices that they made um, the honest truth is that many of you are living on autopilot. You're living your lives in accordance to a very specific set of habitual rules. These are your habits that you just refuse to break because um, 
you know, whether or not it's serving the greater, group, uh, the greater good is immaterial to you. And yeah, we all have good intentions and honorable hopes and dreams and goals for the future. However, the rules by which you live and, and choose to attain those goals um, may actually keep you from the very goals that you're trying to get. For instance, a person who wants to get rich may um, decide that the only way to get rich quickly is to rob a bank. And as a result, you may very well get out of the bank with the money, but you spend the rest of your time that you are free dodging the police. So you may have attained your immediate goal, but you have not reached your destination because you are always running from it thereafter. Um, and instead, another destination awaits you, which is not the one that you had counted on. Um, some of uh, us just go through life dwelling upon the things that we want most out of life, but we don't take the steps to get it. The reason why so many go wrong and don't even end up attaining their desired goal is because the objective um, is wrong. If you want to become rich and famous so that you can win friends and influence people, well, that's the wrong objective. And so all of the time that you're exerting, worrying about how you can get to that goal, you're actually pushing people away. And you're, you're not, unless someone is, is adding to your agenda, you don't want them in your life. When the person today that may seem like they're not a likely friend or ally could very well tomorrow be the very person that you should have um, at least spoke to and found out where they were where they were headed and what they were doing and perhaps you could have caught a ride okay and um you know a lot of our goals don't allow us the freedom to experiment we just become stuck on the one thing either our parent tells us oh well i want you to become this or i think you should do that and so we become um locked into this choice that someone else has made for us when it may not very well be the choice that we want for ourselves or even the thing that we're going to excel at. So we need to have that freedom to experiment, to fail, to make mistakes, and to enjoy the process. Now, um, the rules we live by, if they don't allow us to live life the way it is meant to be lived, then we suffer as a result of it. How many people do you know? I can tell you, I know people who have quote unquote success in life but they're miserable people they're not happy and um you know one of the reasons they call life a game is because indeed you have to be in it you have to play it if you're going to win now Unfortunately, most people live life too seriously. And I mentioned this the other day when I did my little fun video. And I said, you know, sometimes you just got to chill and, and have fun. And this is why when things get out of control, they become overwhelmed because they're already stressed. So God forbid something happens that deviates them from the path that they're on. Like they, they put all their... Um, eggs in one basket. They've decided, oh, this job, I'm going to rise to the top of the company and I'm going to make all this money. And then they get fired. So they panic because they, they face a problem that they can't solve and they get frustrated. And when someone disagrees with them, they get angry. When they encounter a, an unfamiliar situation, they succumb to their fears and so forth. When you allow yourself a little relaxation and, and time to chill, you can look at things from a different perspective and you can also find humor in things and you can also let go and let God. People who are living by a set of habitual rules that have them conditioned, um, instead of helping you get more out of life, the rules are preventing you from moving forward because you're stuck in a rut. Now, the innocence of childhood, if you think back a minute to your childhood and the youthful innocence and enthusiasm that you had, um, that you brought, you know, you, you were happy about every little activity. I remember sitting and playing with 
scissors and paper, just cutting little things out. And I was happy as a lark. And, and, and you treated everything. When we were kids, we treated everything as a game. Um, everything we did was fun and exciting. And it remained that way until somebody said, grow up. Then suddenly, either you or they caused you to change the rules of how life should be played. And you were told in many cases that life isn't a game and that you must take things more seriously. And there is, there is truth to that. But you were also instilled, most of you, to know that actions have negative consequences, that you need to protect yourself from pain and that you have to hold on tight to things that you own and that you must follow the universally accepted rules that everybody else has grown up with. And you were told that's the only way to live life and that this is how you must live your life from now on, from this moment moving forward. So in an instance, your childhood innocence and that unbridled enthusiasm was ripped away as harshly as a Band-Aid. Now life was no longer a game. In fact, it was an endless struggle, a struggle to protect, to protect yourself from pain and harm. And you have lived this way following exactly these rules ever since. And you probably never even questioned what life could be like if you lived it another way, a better way, under a different set of rules, just like when you were a child. And I think that part of winning the game of life, at least I can say for myself, and it has worked, is that we have to recapture the magic of childhood and once again live life as it should be. Remember, we are children of the Most High. Even in the Word, it says that when we become Christians, we are born again. So we are born a new creature in Christ. We are children again. And before I can get into the rules of how to live this life as a game and to play it, to win, I want to just take you through a few um, things in terms of what life requires from us each and every single day. And these requirements are essentials for living your life to the highest level of fulfillment and satisfaction. And most of them are pretty non-negotiable because in order for you to, to accept and fully acknowledge these things, you have to realize that without that, you won't move on. In other words, you have to wholeheartedly agree with these statements in order to begin shifting the game in your favor. Succeeding in life requires acknowledging that the results you get from life are a direct reflection of your habitual thoughts, words, and actions. So whatever you have conditioned yourself to think every day, to do every day, and um, even to speak, to, to, to come out of your mouth, these are the things that will shape your life. So if you're an angry, mean, cussing person and nobody likes you, chances are you're not going to succeed at life. As a matter of fact, you're definitely not going to ex um, excel at anything because no one's going to want to be around you. No one's going to want to come in your business. I'll tell you a prime example of this. There's this Indian restaurant that I order from pretty frequently. The food is great. But last night, I ordered, and I thought I had gotten everything in my first order. I ordered online, and I was picking things, and I thought I had picked something that I didn't. So the order was already closed and I said, oh man, now I got to make another order. So I went back in and I checked off the things that I meant to check off the first time. And then it dawned on me that they were going to have two separate deliveries. So I said, well, let me call the restaurant and let them know, please um, send everything together. Well, not only did they switch me to three different people before I could even convey the message, but the last person that they put on the phone was nasty. He picks up the phone. What do you want? That's not how you talk to a customer, especially a big money customer. But it didn't matter if I was spending five dollars. Where's your your business acumen? So the fact that the, he was such a miserable person, 
I made a determination right then and there. Well, guess what, dude? You're not the only game in town, and I will never order from this place again. And it's a shame because, like I said, the food is good. But there are other places that have equally good food and good service. And that, to me, is just as important. So you're choosing how you wish to go through life. And if you're choosing to go through life a nasty, angry person, then most of the life that you live is going to be by yourself because no one wants to put up with that and no one has to. Next, <clears throat> You have to choose your own path and not the path that's laid out for you by others. Now, this, this is difficult when you're young because as you're growing, sometimes you can be 18, 19, and you still don't know the path you want to take. But one thing you do know is you know what you don't want. So if your parents or your best friend or someone tells you, oh, I think you should do that, I think you should do this, if it's not what you want, then don't do it. Dedicate yourself to something worthwhile. This is your higher purpose. And you are, you are bound by just having lived and been born to dedicate yourself to something worthwhile. I, I heard a quote once. It was um, attributed to the great Muhammad Ali. And what he said was, Service to others is the rent we pay for our room in heaven. And I love that. Because indeed, you will do more to get to your goal in this lifetime by helping others than you will by just being selfish and only helping yourself. Dedicate yourself to daily growth and learning from experience, from other people, from mistakes and from failure. Never curse errors, never curse mistakes. I remember when my laptop broke and I was pretty upset, but I didn't curse it because I had had the thing, I had, I had it for about, oh my goodness, maybe five years. It was already old because someone had given it to me, so it was used. It wasn't a, a new model, so there were a lot of limitations on it. Some of you may remember the videos that I used to do on my old laptop, and they weren't that great. The sound was awful. And not only that, um, you know, it was, it, was a, it was about that time for me to get a new laptop. So instead of cursing it, I actually took it as a blessing because I was like, well, now I have to get a new laptop. And I stepped up my game 100%. Um, take advantage of opportunities to move your life forward in a better way. There are some of you that opportunities will knock on your door and you won't even get up and answer it. You don't know what's outside of that door unless you get up and open it and walk out. Staying in the house, playing video games, looking at TV, on your devices, this is not going to provide opportunities. Unless you're a game developer, there is no reason for you to be spending eight hours playing a game. Take full responsibility for your life, your choices, decisions, and actions. Don't complain. Don't blame others or make excuses. In one of my videos, I was saying how um, I know some people who um, they, they um, I knew personally, actually, one brother who, um, when I was younger, he was at my house a lot of the time and he didn't work. And so one day I told him, I says, um, so you're going to go look for a job today? And he's like, oh, man, white man holding me back. And my thought was that there's no white man standing over this bed holding you down and holding you back. You know, you have to go out and look. And I'm not saying that all black men are like that. Of course not. But this one was. And he was, he was my black man. And I was young and I put up with it because I had the money at the time. So I didn't care because I just wanted him there. But eventually I got a clue and, and got rid of him because he was just taking the ride. And, um, you know, that was his goal in life, to find people that he could just, you know, ride with. Um, ask plenty of thought-provoking and insightful questions about life, about problems, and about circumstances. There are a lot of people out there, they stay in darkness because they're too ashamed to ask anyone a question. Don't be ashamed, especially look for people that are likely to have the answers. 
If you want to know something about the legal field, ask someone who's already in it. Um, if you want to know about medicine, ask a doctor or a nurse or even a, um, any kind of health professional that might be moving in the circles that you feel your life is directed towards. Remain flexible in thought and open-minded to things. If you're closed-minded, you'll never get past first base. You have to be open-minded in life. It doesn't mean you have to accept everything that's thrown your way, but at least hear a person out. You never know. And while you're doing that, yes, hold true to your core values. So don't do things that you're uncomfortable with. Don't do things that go against your beliefs and, and your walk. As a Christian, I'm not going to do certain things. I don't go certain places. That's my choice, and I stick by it. Because when you go against your grain, you're never happy. And that's why you have some people who, although they have considerable money, they don't have peace of mind because they're doing something that they actually don't like, or it's, in some cases, they even detest. Make short-term sacrifices for long-term gains. Sometimes, you know, Chaka Khan had a song once, it was called Through the Fire. Sometimes we've got to go through the fire. This is how um, gold is, is, um, is uh, created. It has to be, it has to go through the fire in order to, to get that color that you see when it's in the jewelry shop. You, um, you've got to, to be primed for what's coming up. So you can't just, you know, go out there and you're going to jump right into success. No, sometimes you've got to sacrifice for it. If it means um, eating ramen noodles for um, six months while you save up the money you need to take that DJ course or whatever it is that you're, you're aiming for, then you do what you have to do. You also have to make tough decisions that may even feel uncomfortable and may even involve some type of risk. Now, I'm not talking about throwing your money away and I'm not talking about breaking the law, but I'm saying sometimes there are people who are like mud in your wings. So if you have friends who are goofing off and they absolutely have no direction, they're not trying to be about anything, you might have to shake them. Um, you might need to keep your circle tight because if you're going somewhere and the people around you are not, they can very well hold you back. Um, challenge yourself. Raise your personal standards. Overcome negative thoughts, negative beliefs, negative habits, and negative fears. If you put the Lord first, you put God first, then you should not fear anything. In whom shall thy fear? If God be for you, who can be against you? And I can tell you that as, as a walking, talking Christian who knows every day of my life, I don't fear anything because God is for me. So even if something happens that was not in my day plans, and even if it's something that I don't particularly feel happy about, I am not going to question it because God has my back. Choose to stand up for your values and beliefs and convictions. Some of you are in work situations where you're being sexually harassed or you're being um, bullied or any type of thing that would make your workplace uncomfortable and go against your values, your beliefs, and your convictions, then you need to leave. You need to be able to have the reserve to fight or go. In some cases, it's worth fighting for. And a lot of companies now have um, within their personnel departments ways that you can fight for your right. To, to work in peace and to do your job without these little extra things that people bring to the job. In other cases, you may have to leave, but you have to be strong in order to do that. You have to avoid getting caught up in the cycle of procrastination and instant gratification. Now, procrastination, for those of you who do not know, 
is always putting something off. Sometimes these things are important, sometimes they're not so important, so you feel like, ah, it could, it could wait, it could wait, it could wait. But maybe it can't wait, and by putting it off, it's also stopping your progress. The other thing is the instant gratification. If your rent is due, and those Manolo Blahniks are $2,000, well, the smart cho choice is to pay your rent. Because there's nothing cool about being homeless in $1,000 shoes. Fully accept that life isn't always fair, that it can be uncertain, and that it is full of pitfalls and constantly changing. Once you acknowledge that, you can do anything because you go into it with an open mind and you're ready for, any, for anything. You know, um, in order to be successful at playing the game of life, you first need to accept the harsh reality that life might have to offer. It does, it's not always, um, it's not always good. People die, friends stop talking to you, you lose jobs, you lose homes. But how many success stories have you heard from people who lost everything only to get more? It's just like um, Job in the Bible. He lost everything, but he got even more than he lost. And remember, as you play the game of life, it's like playing a computer game or a board game or being in a sports competition. There's going to be ups and there's going to be downs. What makes you a winner is how you deal with them. There are going to be moments when everything is going well and you feel unstoppable. But then there's going to be moments during the game when things don't go so well and may even go wrong. Or what might have seemed like a sure thing has now turned into a struggle. And, of course, you might not like how things are going, but you still have to remain committed to playing the game. You can't give up. You have to give it your all, despite whatever unfavorable circumstances you might encounter. Because if you leave, leave the game or you quit, then you've only done more harm than good. And you will never know how the game could have turned out. Of course, you want to win. But you also want to enjoy the experience of playing the game. And the more you play the game, the more experience you gain. I remember a meme I saw once. It said, um, if you don't follow your dream, then you wind up working for the person who's following theirs. If you don't gain experience in life, then you will always be at the mercy of people more experienced than you. Experience is knowledge if you apply it. There are some people who have to have the same experience over and over again and they never get it. This is why you have recidivism, these people who go back and forth to jail, because they didn't get it the first time. So they have to experience it again and again and again. And in some cases, I actually think that they, um, they chalk it up to the game. So they don't, they don't mind that because they feel like, well, this is what I choose. I chose to be about that life and prison is just a part of the, um, the penalty. But if you're not one of those people, then you want to use life's experiences to teach you what to do and what not to do when you jump back into the game. Um, I'll be doing some more of these. I'm going to pretty much wind it up here because um, I could go on and on and on. But I think I've given you enough to at least begin so I'm going to end this with saying, in this game of life, you're going to experience setbacks and problems. 
You're going to make mistakes. You're going to go through a diverse set of painful emotions, whether they be personal in your personal life or your business life. And sometimes you will fail miserably. You're going to experience criticism and rejection. <coughs> and you may even embarrass yourself in front of others. But you will win and you will lose more often than you win. But all that matters is that you win. Keep God first, people, and everything else will follow. I'm going to end with a prayer. Lord, um, you impressed upon me to tell the people today how to win at life. And the first thing that um, I was led to in my life was to put you first. So I'm asking you to help the people to see that anything in this life can be achieved if they put you first. And if they believe that all things through you are possible. I ask you to help the youth to to listen to these words and to shape their futures and to go about becoming those people that you have designed them to be. To to uplift each other and to to become examples and mentors within their generation so that other young people will, will follow them. Because Lord, you already know, the young people don't want to hear from us old folks, but they believe in each other. They look up to each other. They're each other's heroes. And so for that reason, if none other, we need good, positive, young leaders. And I believe you, Lord. I believe that this is done, and I accept it, and, and I claim it in your mighty, holy name, in the name of Jesus. Thank you. Amen. You want to be a winner, but right now you're just a beginner, and every day your chances seem to be getting thinner.